Alright, today we are covering the armor for your tits. No, I'm just kidding. Um, today we're doing the breastplate, backplate, fold um, combo. First thing I'm going to cover is some of the undergarments, as it were, that go underneath the armor just so you get a more complete picture of what you would actually be wearing. So here we are just doodling up a, an arming doublet. Essentially that is um, just a padded piece of clothing. It's sort of a later version of a gambeson. It's a textile based armor. Um, provides a small bit of padding for actual impact but also makes it so the armor isn't so difficult and, and painful to wear. This would be stitched up the front um, in that spiral pattern that you just saw there. This is what it would look like when the stitches were actually uh, in the garment. And then down there at the bottom, there are some pointing eyelets or holes where you would put um, some cordage through there to um, tie the eventual leg harness to. And I'm just sort of illustrating the quilted pattern here, those cross stitching would hold the padding in place and it would be very tight in at the waist here specifically so that it would hold weight of the leg armor and not put it on your shoulders which would just be overly cumbersome so as you can see the weight would be pulling down on the bottom of the garment grabbing at the hips and waist instead of the shoulders and then, generally speaking, over top of the arming doublet would be worn a male shirt of some, some description. Highly tailored, of course, um, with extra material around the shoulders and armpits, much like you can see there on the underneath arming doublet, that big wide armhole allows the arms to move around without affecting that waist section. And then another um, configuration that would be for later armors um, and different regions, Germans would often do the voiders rather than the entire male shirt, which would just make everything lighter and less cumbersome. Um, that's, what, that's what you're seeing there. Here we've got the breastplate coming in with that very round bulbous shape uh, they would call it globos a globos breastplate and then of course hanging down from the bottom of it we have the lames of the fold which is the sort of hips waist groin protection um, a lot of people think the breastplate would cover all the way down to the to the uh, to the hips but in fact it just goes over the rib cage um, and it's a lot shorter than people think and then the fold covers the rest where your organs kind of are or your intestines and then that v-shaped thing up top is a stop rib essentially it's just a little bit of extra deflect um, deflecting for anything coming in towards the throat in an upward motion it'll it'll kind of bounce it off and away from the throat and then hanging off the fold, we have our tassets. Those would come in many, many different styles and shapes because of where they hang, they don't really need to be conformed to the body um, particularly. So they would kind of do styling with those because they don't really need to be any particular shape. They just kind of need to be where they're at. And the back plate, kind of an afterthought just because it's just a less complex version of the breastplate and fold except on the back um, and sometimes they oftentimes wouldn't even wear a back plate it would just be the male shirt covering your back and hopefully you wouldn't be getting hit in the back because you wouldn't be running away right um, here's an inside view of the fold it is constructed exactly the same as the shoulder assembly the pauldron I showed in the last video three leather straps riveted to the inside it not only allows flexibility but it the leather kind of wants to push 
the lames out to their fully extended position naturally. Then, okay, we're just going over some terms here again. We have the arming doublet, the voiders, stop rib, our fold, of course, is comprised of multiple lames. I did three just for the sake of simplicity, but those would often be up to like eight lames. Um, five to eight. Then, of course, we got the tacits again. And that is pretty much it. One more thing I forgot, the Pizan is a male collar, sometimes known as a standard as well. Oh, and then also we had, oftentimes, uh, in the later periods, a lance rest that would be integral to the breastplate itself. So just a little thing you can rest your lance on when you're charging in. And there you have it, a very quick and simplified rundown of the high medieval breastplate and undergarments configuration. Hope you enjoyed. See you next week.